competing is probably the most exhilarating thing that I've done in my adult life, but I don't remember being on the platform. It's definitely exhilarating, so much so that you really, you tune out the crowd. You know they're there. It wouldn't be the same if they weren't cheering for you, but it's just you in the bar, you know? Is that corny? Before you can get on the platform, there's a couple things that you have to consider. The first of which being, which federation are you going to lift for? There's a ton of federations out there. I'm going to specifically talk about two today. USAPL, which is USA Powerlifting, and USPA, United States Powerlifting Association, I think. I lift with USAPL. So we're going to start there. USAPL used to be affiliated with the IPF, so if you were going to be a world-level athlete, you could go to IPF Worlds. The jury's out on that one. Stick around and we'll see what happens moving forward. If you're not up to date, the IPF recently banned the USAPL over some differences in their drug testing protocols. So if you want to know everything that's going on with that, the EYC blog has published the entire paper trail um, with a little bit of analysis, breaking it down, and a bunch of other athletes who have been involved with world level competitions have spoken out and there's a bunch of stuff online that you can go read. So if you don't know what's going on, go find out and then come back because there's a couple other differences that you're going to want to know about between the two federations. In USAPL, you are probably going to be drug tested at least once, even if you only compete at local level meets. So they do have a testing pool at every meet that they run. On top of that, you're going to use the same stiff bar, a power bar, for every single lift, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift, same bar through and through. There's three different classes, we'll say, that you can lift in. So you can compete classic raw. This is where you have no extra equipment, just the standard, you know, lever, prong belt, some knee sleeves, not knee wraps. If you want to move into more equipped territory, see what I did there? You're going to go into the equipped class. So if you lift equipped, you have a little bit more equipment. Your clothes, there's specific clothing that you're going to wear. I don't lift equipped. I'm not going to speak on equipped lifting. There's also raw with wraps, so that's kind of where the best of both worlds meet. You lift raw, but on the squat you get to wear knee wraps. Generally, if this is your first meet, you're probably going to lift classic raw. So that's what I'm going to talk about today if you are interested in equipped lifting or raw with wraps. You're going to have to go find your own research. If you are lifting raw, though, one of your other options is USPA. You can do raw, which is the same as USAPL's classic. You can do equipped single ply and equipped multi ply, and you can also do classic raw, which is USAPL's raw with wraps. So there's a couple differences there. Again, for your first meet, it's probably not going to matter because both of them do have a raw division, and that's where a lot of people nowadays tend to start. Historically, powerlifting was actually equipped, but we won't get into that. Next, the difference between USPA and USAPL is the bar choice. So if you lift with USPA, then you can use a squat bar, which is a 55 pound bar for your squat. You use a power bar, the standard stiff bar for your bench, and you use a deadlift bar, which is still 45 pounds, but it's a little longer and has a lot more flex for your deadlift. So if you've been training with a squat bar and a deadlift bar, you might consider sticking with USPA just because it matches your training. In terms of the Overlord Federation, USPA is affiliated with IPL, which is the International Powerlifting League, not to be confused with the IPF, International Powerlifting Federation, which is what USAPL used to be affiliated with. No matter which federation you choose, you're going to be in a weight class and you're going to be split into a division based on your age. Those weight classes and division like kind of lines between them vary from federation to federation, but it's not super notable to the point that we're going to go through all of them right here. Just know that whatever federation you choose, you are going to have to look up and see what age division you're going to be in and also what weight class you're going to shoot for. Speaking of weight class, after you sign up for a competition, you're going to want to make sure that you stay in the weight class that you signed up for. So coming up on your competition, weight management is something that you are going to want to think about. Possibly. If it's your first meet, Figure out what you weigh now and sign up for the class that you're going to be able to stay in with no effort. If you are like right on the cusp, go to the next weight class because then you can really focus on getting strong and packing on muscle and not worry about missing out on your weigh-in. A lot of advanced athletes will do something called a water cut and this is manipulation of sodium and water intake to force your body to get rid of excess water. 
Now when I say excess, I mean almost all water. So it's really just a bigger name for dehydration. It can and will impact your performance. You're probably going to feel like shit. So for your first meet, for your second meet, for any meet that you're not qualifying for a bigger meet for or setting like a record, it's probably not worth it to water cut. It's probably better off to just go and compete in a weight class that you can stay in comfortably. If you are thinking that you're going to weigh over your weight class boundary, it's okay. If this meet needed a qualifying total and you've met the qualifying total for the next weight class up, you may be allowed to lift up. If not, you'll probably still be allowed to lift just as a guest lifter. So what that means is you won't necessarily get a total awarded to you at the end, but you can still lift and let's be real, that's all what we're here for. Managing your weight is just a piece of the picture and that's why when you're getting ready for a meet, I do recommend hiring a coach if it's within your meet. So a coach can help prep you in terms of your weight management, but they can also, and they will also, write a program to guide you from start to finish to get you ready to get on that platform. A common framework that they're gonna follow is a peak and taper. Peak and taper is increasing your intensity until you're like near maximal lifts and then decreasing your volume. So you peak, you get really heavy, you reach your peak, and then you taper. You start cutting off the amount of work that you're doing so that you can recover prior to getting on the platform. A peak and taper is gonna vary lifter to lifter. Things like age, time to recover, experience level, all of that plays a role in your peak and taper. It's not an exact science, so it is gonna be a lot easier to manage if you do have a coach guiding you through that. But you know, rest easy, shit happens. And if you can't hire a coach, you can 100% get online. You can check out some of the free powerlifting programs that are available. The EYC blog has a couple of resources to help you vet your powerlifting program. I'll put those links in the description box below. And if you're feeling really frisky and you wanna write your own program, I don't recommend it, but rest assured, I have a resource for you also in the description box below to guide you through one possible framework for writing your own program. That was a lot of information. Let's recap. Pick a federation, find a meet, sign up, Hire a coach if you can. If you can't, find a program. Train up. Rest easy. Eat a lot. Don't worry about your weight. Just go in, compete, hit some nasty numbers, and then come back and let me know what you did. There's definitely more to take into account before you really get to your platform day. So be sure to like this video, subscribe so that you get the next installment of this segment. We're going to talk about what you're going to do the week of your meet, you don't want to miss that. If you need it sooner than later, be sure to check out the EYCblog.com where I have the complete guide to your first powerlifting meet. And if you're in a bit of a rush, sign up for our email list and I'll send you printables directly to your inbox, complete with a meat packing checklist, attempt planners, a cheat sheet for vocab and common mistakes on your lifts. We are going to cover all of this in this playlist, so be sure to stick around. This is Powerlifting by Women for Women, here to find the strongest version of you, annihilate diet culture, and show them what it really means to do anything like a girl. Mm -hmm.